People on Earth like to talk a lot about colonizing Mars. But what if it had already happened, and the first humans had already settled down on the Red Planet? What would life on Mars look like? Would we be able to live on the surface, or have to hide underground from all the solar radiation that Mars gets exposed to? Would we be able to terraform it? This is what if, and here's what would happen if we lived on Mars. Ever felt like getting off this planet? Well, consider Mars, fourth rock from the sun. It can be as close as 56 million kilometers away. It can also be as far as 401 million kilometers away. Even if you jumped into the fastest spacecraft ever launched from Earth, getting there would take anywhere from 40 days to nine and a half months, depending on the position of the planets. And after all that time spent in space, you'd finally see dry and lifeless Mars on the horizon. Would you be able to survive there? What would you need to survive on Mars anyway? First off, you'd have to figure out how to produce oxygen to breathe. The Martian atmosphere is very thin, and it's 95% carbon dioxide. You wouldn't be able to just bring the oxygen you need to survive, but you could extract it from the carbon dioxide with machines like NASA's MOXIE. Not only would that provide you and other Martian settlers with breathable air, but also supply you with liquid oxygen propellant that's the stuff you'd need to lift a rocket off Mars, in case you decide to return to Earth. There's no fertile soil on Mars to grow food in. Instead, you'd use hydroponics, cultivating your crops in a mineral and nutrient solution, no soil required. Of course, without running water on the surface, your colony would only be able to grow 20% of the food you'd need. The rest of it you'd have shipped in from Earth. But don't expect fresh meat, all your food would come dried. Along with the other settlers, you'd probably live in inflatable pressurized buildings. But it's more likely that you'd go underground. Because Mars has no global geomagnetic field, and since its atmosphere is so thin, radiation levels in the orbit above Mars are two and a half times higher than at the International Space Station. That's too much solar radiation for humans to bear. Forget about sun tanning, the sun would appear just half as big as it does from Earth. And if you want to go outside and return alive, You'd need a spacesuit to make up for the near-absent atmospheric pressure and to block radiation. Your suit would also keep you warm, which is important because temperatures on Mars are very low. The coldest winter on Earth is paradise compared to the average Martian winter. Temperatures would be as low as 55 degrees below zero, even colder at the poles, where the temperatures can drop to a freezing minus 153 degrees. A day on Mars is just 40 minutes longer than a day on Earth. A year on Mars would be almost twice as long, though. If you lived in the Northern Hemisphere, you'd enjoy seven months of spring and six months of summer. Then there would be a five-month-long autumn and another four months of winter. And not only are the temperatures there low, they can also change dramatically within a week. These variations often result in powerful dust storms. They wouldn't harm you, but they'd clog all your electronics. Remember, too, that the gravity on Mars is about one-third of Earth's. You'd need to learn how to walk again. Still want to move to the Red Planet? Well, your best bet is to wait until the first human colonies head there to terraform the planet, to make it just like the one they came from. They'd import ammonia ice from the atmospheres of other planets to heat Mars up a little. The heat would convert the dry ice at the Martian North Pole into gas and give the planet an atmosphere. Still unbreathable for us, but at least it would be enough to create atmospheric pressure so that you could finally take off your spacesuit. Then, they'd extract water from the vast reserves of water ice locked beneath Mars' surface. Water vapor would make the atmosphere thicker and thicker. Eventually, you'd see it raining and snowing on Mars. And after maybe a thousand years, there'd be enough oxygen for humans to breathe. The planet re-engineering would be complete. Is living on Mars something you'd like to try? Or would you rather preserve what we have here on Earth?